Hi, this is Igor from hdhead.com. In this series of tutorials for DaVinci Resolve version 15, I cover a range of interesting new tools that colorists may have not been exposed to. In this tutorial, we'll go over the planar tracker in Fusion. This really won't be an in-depth tutorial of planar tracking. My goal is really to give you a, a, a broad overview of what can be done in Resolve version 15. Here we have a clip, a profile of a woman drinking from a water bottle. We'll take that into Fusion. In Fusion, this clip is represented by this media in one node. The node on the right represents the output that will be sent back out to edit page of Resolve and subsequently the color page. So we will add planar tracker to the media in one by right clicking, going to insert tool, tracking, planar tracker. And I will drag and drop the tracker into the viewer on the right, which is our viewer number two. And I will also disable the viewer one on the left by clicking this button here and give ourselves a little bit more room to work with. Unlike a point tracker that you might be familiar with, a planar tracker attempts to track picture information that lies on a single plane. This kind of tracker is often very good for taking out or adding things to faces because you can break out human face into a, uh, a combination of flat planes. So if you look at these three very convenient beauty marks, they almost lie in a single plane. This plane does extend down here as well, but I will place three points here on this area. I, I could have made it bigger or, or, or even smaller. I think these uh, beauty marks will be of use to the tracker even though don't get confused for a point tracker. It won't be specifically tracking just these three beauty marks. We are looking for something that describes a single plane. So for example if I extended this over here that would not have been good because this is a different plane back there. On the inspector side on the right I will change the motion type to, see, she's just moving and tilting her head back. So I'm going to change the motion type to translation and rotation. There's no scale, there's no perspective change. It's only translation and rotation. And I'll click on set and track forward from our first frame. One other significant setting that I failed to mention is the track channel which defaults to Luma and if you go up here and break your image into red, green or blue channel which we can do by clicking on these red, the contrast is kind of low green, it's pretty good blue, blue tends to have the most noise so usually green is the best choice Luma is almost the same as green so whether we choose Luma or green for our purpose right now it does not really matter I'll go back to color good, so we have the track, if I push play You'll see the squiggly lines and, the, uh, and our polygon moving with the face. Next step, let's create something that will track onto her face. I will add a background and add a paint tool right after that. And I will press 2 on the keyboard to send this paint to the viewer. That's the same as dragging and dropping it into the viewer. So let's select the stroke. Let's pick our color, something that's not very saturated and dark. I'll make the paintbrush a little bigger maybe like that and let's draw something it can really be anything maybe I'll make the brush size a little smaller draw some lines across it just keep a sort of a hand feel to it so it looks like a face painting good let's enable our second viewer I'll drag and drop paint on the left and the tracker on the right select the tracker go to the operation mode, change it to corner pin and now connect the output of the paint into the tracker so we have a so we're able to corner pin this thing onto her face but um, this black background doesn't make any sense we can eliminate it if we click on the background and drag alpha all the way down to zero Okay push play so that's tracked to her face and now let's go to corner pin settings here 
and change the apply mode to something that's going to blend with the skin a little better. Yeah, we can keep the overlay. That's good. Not bad. It was pretty quick, right? And it tracks pretty well. And a very cool thing is that uh, since you have a fairly decent paint tool in Fusion, you can see your results as you work. You don't have to go to Photoshop, do something, bring it in, hope that it's going to look good. You can do it right here in Fusion. So if I select the paint, let's do something else here. Uh, maybe bring in another color. See, as I'm painting this, it's showing on the right immediately. Let's maybe smudge it a little. And of course, if you step back out to the edit page, this thing is immediately available to resolve. You can color correct it, do whatever you like with this image. Pretty cool. I hope you like this tutorial. Check out the other ones, and for some interesting resolve tools, you can visit hdhead.com.